on the 28th of May 1946, a terrible German war criminal and former member of the SS was led out to the gallows inside of Landsberg prison and he was handed over to the executioner who would administer justice on the gallows. Throughout the Second World War, there were many men and women who became brutal overseers inside of concentration camps and many of these were normal people before the war began but they would become infamous for their treatment of prisoners at sites such as Buchenwald or Bergen-Belsen. But at the end of the conflict, following the liberation of many of the camps, the Americans sought to punish those guards who were responsible, and they would carry out many war crimes trials which resulted in the imprisonment and executions of people who had become monsters inside of the barbed wire fences of the concentration camps. One man who was condemned for his involvement at Dachau and the Gross Rosen camps was Rudolf Heinrich Sutrop, and his name isn't too well known, but his horrific actions deserve to be told for his victims. Join us today as we look at the execution of the Beast of Dachau, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Inside of the courtroom of the Dachau trials, defendant number 24 stood up, and he walked over to a wooden chair in the middle of the room. Flanked on each side of him were the prosecution and the defence, and many other former concentration camp guards and co-defendants looked on. He was wearing a long black leather coat, synonymous with the SS or the German army officers, but Rudolf Heinrich Suttrop was considered an experienced Nazi. He was born on the 17th of July 1911 in Lernen, and it's believed he had a rather normal upbringing, but in September 1933, when he was just 22, he joined the Nazi party. At this time, Hitler and the Nazis were trying to establish a power base, and Hitler that year would rise to the position of Chancellor, and would then begin to negotiate his way into becoming the dictator. At this time, thousands of people each week, like Suttrop, were joining the Nazi party, and membership at this time was in the millions. But he would then join the SS, Heinrich Himmler's paramilitary group of soldiers and officers, who would carry out any order that Hitler stated, including the purge known as the Night of the Long Knives. It's not known for certain why the Nazi party appealed to Suttrop, but many people were bowled over by Hitler's promises to fix the issues following the First World War, and they wanted to feel proud of their Germany again. However, because of his work in the SS, Rudolf Heinrich Suttrop would then find himself based inside of a number of different concentration camps, and the first one he worked in was known as Sachsenburg. This was a site found in eastern Germany, and it was one of the first to be built by the Nazis, and the SS operated it from 1933 to 1937. It was an abandoned four-storey textile mill, which was renovated to serve as protective custody for those who were dissenting against the Nazis, such as Jehovah's Witnesses and also Communists. It was inside Sachsenburg where the SS began to use coloured triangles to identify different types of prisoners, and also armbands to identify the category of inmates. The camp held approximately 2,000 prisoners and opposers to the Nazi regime, and it's believed that there was an immense amount of brutality carried out by the SS guards. Records revealed that there were 11 prisoners killed at the camp, and this was a time before the final solution, and years before the Second World War even begun. But it's believed that many more may have been killed inside of Sachsenburg. But following spending time here, Suttrop was then moved to become a guard inside of the newly opened Buchenwald concentration camp. Buchenwald would become, during the Second World War, one of the most infamous and brutal camps, with guards such as Ilse Koch and her husband Carl Otto Koch overseeing a reign of terror and brutality. The camp opened in August 1937 and prisoners came from all over Europe, and of the 280,000 prisoners that passed through the site, around 56,000 were killed. All the prisoners were forced to conduct hard labour and they were given insufficient food rations and there was execution all around the camp. There was a firing range and also sets of gallows where prisoners would be condemned from. Suttrop was one of the first guards but when the Second World War broke out he left Buchenwald to go and fight on the front line and he was transferred into the Waffen SS, the military detachment of the group and he would also become part of the Tottenkopf division or the Death's Heads unit responsible for the slaughter of thousands of civilians. But following his experiences on the battlefields of the Second World War, Rudolf Heinrich Suttrop then went back into the concentration camps, and he was employed as an adjutant or assistant 
to the commandant of the Gross Rosen camp. He served Arthur Rödel and would become a key player in the deadly destructive nature of Gross Rosen. Further transfers occurred and from May 1942 to May 1944, Sutrop worked as a deputy camp commander or as an assistant to many commandants of Dachau. Dachau was a horrific camp associated with torture. There were many sadistic methods used to inflict suffering onto inmates, such as daily public executions and also there were standing cells, tiny oubliette style dungeons where a prisoner would be locked in one position, stood up for days. Sutrop was clearly trusted inside of Dachau, as he would serve under a number of different commanders and commandants, and he would be responsible for the interests and actions of 235 command staff, and he would be in charge of handling letters and correspondence, which were sent from Himmler. He was also in control of telecommunications, and he managed the fleet of vehicles and also the command offices. He would give regular advice to the commandants too, but he was seen as an able deputy. But if the war would have continued, it's likely that he would have been given command of his own concentration camp at some point. From the 15th of May 1944 to March 1945, he was moved back to Gross Rosen to serve under Johannes Hasselbrück and to oversee the final days of the camp. But at the end of the war, he would try to flee, but he was then quickly detained by the American army and he would then be sent back to Dachau to go up in front of a judge in the Dachau trials for his actions inside of different concentration camps. There were dozens of defendants in these trials, and Sutrop was seen as one of the most senior and experienced guards, but inside of the courtroom, there was a problem. There was actually little proof that he had committed murder, execution and slaughter with his own hands, and there were not too many witnesses that claimed Sutrop did this. However, it was clear he was responsible for the conditions of the camps where he worked. He was charged with assisting and participating in the crimes of Dachau concentration camp, and for this was sentenced to death. He was not necessarily tried for the crimes he had participated in at different sites, but as the assistant to the commandants of Dachau, he was seen as one of those who was mostly responsible for the slaughter with regards to the conditions of the camp. For a brief period of a few months, Rudolf Heinrich Sutrop was sent to Landsberg prison to await his execution, along with the other condemned during the Dachau trials. On the 28th of May 1946, Sutrop was summoned from his prison cell, and in the courtyard of the prison was a huge set of gallows, which would be used to condemn hundreds of Nazi war criminals. He was led out into the courtyard by many military policemen, and would be accompanied by a priest, who would hear his final words. Sutrop was led up the stairs of the gallows, and his arms and legs had been secured, and waiting for him at the top of the gallows was the executioner. Final preparations and checks were made, including checking his arms and legs were secure. He was then shuffled over the trap door, and a cap was placed over his head, and then also the noose was, and the executioner then released the trap door, and Rudolf Heinrich Sutrop was executed, and after a few minutes he was cut down, and then placed in a coffin. The whole world knows about the awful crimes of many of the most high-profile Nazis, but the crimes of guards such as Rudolf Heinrich Sutrop are often overlooked and forgotten about. As a deputy or assistant to the commandants, he was answerable for the conditions of the sites, and also the evils that took place in camps such as Dachau and Gross Rosen. It was his job to oversee the guards and their brutality, and at the end of the war, he was condemned for his crimes. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.